Hello, welcome to the Thursday, March 17th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, today we got an update from Brad about Quackbot. Quackbot has been around for quite a while. This is a sample that Brad captured this week and it follows the standard pattern. It arrives as an email with a link. You click on the link, you download a zip file and that then extracts to an Excel file with macros, which of course the user will then enable. That macro will download the Quackbot DLL files and then there is command control traffic, which was sort of interesting here that there wasn't just the standard uh, Quackbot command control traffic, but there was also Cobalt Strike, which has become uh, somewhat uh, common, of course, these uh, last couple of years. And then there was VNC. VNC probably sort of for convenience and uh, also ease of use. Interesting that it took 17 hours actually for the command control traffic to show up. This may be because it was done more interactively like VNC. So pretty much had to wait for the attacker to wake up and start actually connecting back to the infected system. But also sometimes uh, these delays show up in order uh, to avoid detection in sandboxes. As always, Pratt is making available the PCAPs and all the indicators of compromise. In particular, the PCAPs, of course, are a great resource to learn how to take apart the traffic generated by this type of malware. And Unlab has a write-up about GhostGrange. That's a remote access tool that's sort of derived from the Ghost Rat, according to Unlab, and going back to December 2018. What's sort of new here is that it's now using vulnerable Microsoft SQL and MySQL servers in order to install additional tools like GhostGrange, the remote access tools. I see a lot of malware going after either Microsoft SQL or MySQL, but really not a much that sort of goes after both because typically the infection chain is quite a bit different in Microsoft SQL Server. If you have a badly configured server, you're typically directly able to execute code. In MySQL, on the other hand, you typically first have to download a module into MySQL in order to get code execution. Now, they're sadly not really talking much about how the actual infection happened. And in part, I guess, uh, because they sort of uh, got to the systems only after uh, they were uh, compromised. They also state that the same systems had sort of multiple other malware installed on them. So probably just badly configured credentials and badly configured databases. So probably all the execution features, for example, were enabled or the attacker was able to connect with a weak uh, root or SA password. And then we got a couple of patches you should be aware of. First, DOM PDF. Uh, DOM PDF is a PHP library that allows you to create PDFs from HTML. So your website may have a feature where you are able to, for example, save a page as a PDF. In this case, you may be vulnerable. Now, in order to be vulnerable, the attacker, of course, has to inject specific HTML code to render by DOM PDF and that that's easiest done via cross-site scripting. So it's one of those cases where cross-site scripting may then lead to remote code execution on the server. Sadly, there is no patch available for this vulnerability. It was reported to the group behind DOM PDF on October 5th, but so far nothing available yet. There are now enough details in this blog to actually exploit it. So I guess if you can uh, uninstall it or disable DOM PDF until there is a response regarding a patch. And the OpenSL project released an update this week. It fixes a denial of service vulnerability. So patch, but nothing really all that super urgent. 
Similar for PFSense, PFSense uh, did release an update uh, fixing a couple of vulnerabilities, one of which is rated as high. It uh, could lead to a remote code execution, but does require authentication to the web uh, GUI, which of course you should not expose to the public. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.